I'm outside in an AMG, right outside, TT, two-turn baby girl, you know me, still with the dolls that I grew beside, all the niggas proud me, I and they die, gotta watch the time, cause it's flying right by. What's going on YouTube, it's your boy Chris, aka The Capital Connect, and in today's video, I'm going to be answering the question why I stopped trading supply and demand. Now, before I get into this question, bro, let me just say this, because I already know when I say supply and demand, there are people like who automatically think of one person because we all know like this individual has become like synonymous with supply and demand. So let me just say this, bro. I am in no way saying that the strategy doesn't work. I am in no way saying that that person doesn't know what they're talking about. Obviously, they know what they're talking about because they have the results to follow. Like they, they know what they're doing. Obviously, I, I will in no way ever at like supply and demand doesn't work or who I learned it from doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, bro, no, he knows what he's talking about. OK, he is very knowledgeable. And matter of fact, I show him mad love because he was the first person I found on YouTube that gave me like some clarity in the markets. Like, you know, as far as like when to enter, when to exit what to look for things like that so i'm gonna always be grateful to him so i just have to say that i don't have to say his name just because everybody already know who it is but and by the way let me just say this too because i already know it's gonna be some people in the comments that say it sounds like it was a you problem i agree with you 100 percent. it was a me problem the reason why this strategy wasn't really working for me i agree with you 100 percent Right, I'm not even gonna argue with you on that because it is actually true. It was a me problem why the strategy didn't really work for me. But let me just get into like, it's really just two reasons, bro, why I stopped trading supply and demand. Number one, I didn't really find consistency with it. See, when it comes to strategies, guys, I posted this um, a couple days ago where I said, there is no right way to trade. There is no one size fits all strategy, okay? At the end of the day, when it comes to trading, it is all about discretion, right? So what you may view as a supply and what I may view as a supply is different or may be different. What you view as a, as a demand and what I view as a, as a demand may be different, but there is no necessarily right or wrong answer because if you're making money, who cares, bro? Like if you're making money, who cares about your strategy? There are some people, bro, who will swear by supply and demand and swear it's the best thing ever. And guess what? If they're making money from it, they're right. There are some people who will swear by support and resistance, trend lines, and they'll say that that's the holy grail of trading. And guess what? If they're making money from it, they're right. There are some people who swear ICT and smart money concepts, that's the only way to trade. And if they're making money, they're right. But the thing we have to add after they're right is that they're right for them. They're right for them, right? Those strategies fit them perfectly. So I had a hard time finding consistency with, you know, supply and demand. I'm just going to be real. I had a hard time finding consistency with it. I would have really good days, really good weeks, maybe even possibly a really good month. And then all of a sudden, like it would just fall off. And it's like, bro, what in the world is happening? Like, why can I not find consistency with it? And it's just because like, there was multiple times, bro, when I would trade supply and demand where it would be multiple supplies, multiple demands, right? Maybe sometimes on the same pair, or maybe you're seeing it on different pairs or different instruments or whatever you're trading. And you're like, dang, which one should I take? There's a supply on, you know, NAS, there's a supply on the S&P, there's a supply on the Dow. Which one do I take? And then you choose one of them, that one loses, and then the other one's winning. you like, bro, what? And then, <laughs> or maybe you'll take one, and one win and then the other one doesn't win and it's just like and like you have no reason or like no way to figure out like why one won and why another one did it right or why you know you lost while the other ones won and it seemed like there was multiple times when i was trading supply and demand bro where like there would be you know multiple setups on different pairs or different instruments and i it just seemed like i always picked the one that lost and then the other ones would always win and that just got really frustrating so um, I found it hard to be consistent with it. I'm just going to be real. Now, was that a meat problem? Probably, you know what I'm saying? Because obviously there's a lot of people that are profitable trading supply and demand. So was that a meat problem? I'm, I'm going to agree with you on that. That would probably wasn't me problem. I ain't going to lie. Maybe I was just doing something wrong, which is, you know, perfectly fine. I'll admit that. Um, but the second reason was 
the risk to reward wasn't really, you know, getting it done for me. So the way I learned how to trade supply and demand was, you know, go for a one to one initially, um, whatever, whatever. And the problem I found with trading that way is that it kind of forced me to have to be right more times than I was wrong. And obviously, like I told you guys before, like there would be plenty of times where I would have multiple setups, you know, happening at the same time. I would choose one, one would lose and then the other ones would win. And so it, it kind of felt it was hard, like on my psychology, bro. Like it was very hard on my psychology because I'm like, bro, what am I doing wrong? Like what is happening? You know, it doesn't make any sense. You know, why are the ones I'm choosing? Why are they losing? Why are the other ones are winning? And so it just kind of makes you just lose confidence, bro. And you're like, dang. Maybe something wrong with me. Maybe I shouldn't be trading. Maybe, maybe, maybe this just ain't the strategy for me. And then I kind of just, I kind of just realized, bro, that the strategy isn't for me. You know what I'm saying? Like that strategy alone isn't for me. You know what I'm saying? Like there are some people, bro, who live and die by supply and demand. There are some people where that, like, that is their bread and butter every single day. That is what they're looking for. And guess what? Shout out to you, bro. Keep on doing it. Keep on looking for supply and demand. Now, I told you guys, I'm going to always be, you know, transparent while I'm on this journey. Um, you know, I'm always be transparent on YouTube because I'm sure there's other people out there who may feel like a strategy isn't for them. And guess what? If the, like, it's okay, bro. I don't feel like there's anything wrong with you just because a strategy doesn't work for you. Like it just may not be the strategy for you. It doesn't matter that there's so many people that are profitable with a particular strategy. If it's not working for you, you can have the confidence to say, okay, I need to find something else, right? I need to figure out something else that's going to work for me. And that's for anybody, bro. Listen to any profitable trader. They will all tell you the same thing that at one point in time, they were trading one thing. And then all of a sudden they switched to do something else, right? That is, it's everyone's story, bro. We all initially start with some, start somewhere, but then eventually end up somewhere else. So don't be afraid to switch strategies just because you see someone else being profitable with that same strategy you're struggling with. It just may not be good for you, bro. It may not be good for you. And that's perfectly fine. Like, so my new strategy is the unicorn setup, which I so affectionately call the uni, right? So the uni actually happened twice today. Today is Thursday, February 29th, bro. It happened twice today and it won both times. And the strategy is very simple. Wait for a liquidity sweep of a high probability liquidity area, right? Such as yesterday's high or daily highs, daily lows, session highs, session lows, obvious liquidity like double tops, double bottom, you know, double bottoms, you know, ranges, things like that. So as you can see, the first setup happened in the AM session, okay? We got a sweep of yesterday's high, and then we also get a sweep of a whole bunch of highs um, over here looking to the left. So we swept a whole bunch of highs, um, you know, on this push up. Now, that's step number one. We got a sweep of liquidity. Step number two, look for a failed order block. Now, I said in the video from last week that for my particular strategy and the way I traded, bro, it does not matter if it is a high probability order block or not, okay? It does not matter. I don't care if it's high probability or not. I just need it to be a failed order block. So this is the last bearish candle before the push up that swept liquidity. So this is our order block right here, okay? All I need for that to do, I just need it to fail, which means I just need a candle to close below it, which we got that. Now all I need is a fair value gap that overlaps with this breaker, breaker block just in some way, shape or form, okay? And by the way, a failed order block turns into what is known as a breaker block. So all I need is sweep of liquidity, failed order block, slash breaker block, and now a fair value gap that overlaps with it in some way, shape or form. We got all three of those things here. Now, let me just be completely honest. I did not take this because I, I was just trying to wait and see how candles will react because typically, bro, after a huge news release, like this where price has like a huge impulsive move you know either to the upside or to the downside i like to I like to just wait you know after i see the first setup i like to just wait and see you know what's going to happen like how does price react and i'm not gonna lie bro i did not like the reaction that i was getting at the zone here right this fair value gap um we see we got candles closing in it we got all these strong bullish candles i don't really like it so i didn't take it 
However, if I would have taken it, you know, my stop loss would have been above the fair value gap candle. Like I told you guys was one of the options um, in the last video. Stop loss would have been above the fair value gap candle, targeting opposing liquidity. Um, so your first TP could have been here. Um, you know, stop loss going to break even. You might have gotten stopped at break even right here, um, depending on your entry. Like if you had a limit order or if you, you know, market executed, but you might have got stopped at break even here. But you know, you could have just held it to consequent encroachment of this big old bullish fair value gap. And as you guys can see, um, we got just to that. Let me put this on. We got to that with no problem, right? We got the consequent encroachment of that bullish fair value gap. 100 points, if you would have taken that, you would have been good to go for the day, right? You would have been good to go. Um, that was the first setup. Then in PM session of New York, there was another setup. So we get this push down, right? We sweep liquidity and then we tap into this uh, bullish fair value gap. Now we already know that bullish fair value gaps are considered internal liquidity. So after internal liquidity is taken, the next level of liquidity we need to be looking to take is external in the forms of highs and lows. So all I would have been doing, I would have been looking for this high of AM session to be taken out. So where's the unicorn? Let me delete this so y'all don't get confused. Let me delete this real quick. So we tap into internal liquidity. So that is our quote unquote liquidity sweep. Um, we also took out these lows, but you know, we tapped into internal uh, liquidity here. So now all I'm looking for is a failed order block. Again, I do not care if it is high probability or not. I just need it to be an order block. So this is the last bullish candle before the push down that swept liquidity. So this is our failed order block here, turns into a breaker block. What do we need? I just need a fair value gap to overlap with that breaker block in some way, shape or form, which we get right here. And as you guys can see, price taps back into it, you know, later on in the PM session, and it goes on to take out the high of AM session. So that is the new strategy that I'm implementing. Um, and you know, and that is the reason why I stopped trading supply and demand. I feel like with this strategy, it is a whole lot easier, at least in my eyes, um, to get a good read on where the market is going. Because as we know, when it comes to order blocks, like, you know, if this is valid, then price should hold right here and we should be continuing down. The fact that price made this order block fail lets me know or signals to us that, hey, price is looking to go higher. And the fact that we got a failed order block here with the fair value gap, bro, that's that's literally all the confluences you could ask for. Like that's, that's two confluences right there, along with us having a liquidity sweep as well. Like this strategy is just beautiful. So um, that's why I stopped trading supply and demand. There's nothing wrong with supply and demand. If you trade supply and demand and you have success with it, then keep on going, bro. Just don't, don't listen to anything I say. Like, bro, do whatever is working for you, okay? If not, if a strategy isn't working for you, like even if you start trading this, you like, bro, this just ain't working for me. By all means, switch. Like, don't don't be so loyal to a strategy because you see someone else being successful with it. Because someone else's armor ain't your armor, right? And y'all don't even know what that means, but trust me, I'm gonna make a video about that in the future. I'm um, going over what I'm referencing when I say that, but that's all I got for this video, man. I hope you guys, you know, got some insight from this and I hope that, you know, now you guys have some clarity on why I stopped trading supply and demand. Um, if you guys got any questions, as always, drop them in the comments, but that's all I got for this video. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. I'm gone.